there are orange, there are light green, there are violet, there are red. Name all the colors, it's here in this plant. Good day to us once again and you are here back at Dexter's World Channel. Today we are going to feature you some kind of a plantation of aquatic plants. Of course we already have a video on this. Actually three or four months ago we made a video about this varieties of aquatic plants in the garden of my friend Jenny. And this is not the first time that he appeared in our video because uh, he is a close friend of mine and his business is actually propagating several varieties of aquatic plants. Well, if you are an aquarist, one of the highest endeavor to happiest is to have a planted aquarium. And these plants are the plants that we use if we are going to have a beautiful planted aquarium. Jimmy will teach us later how we are going to propagate this one. But for the meantime, I would like to have a tour of this plantation. Yes, of course, you will see the color, the green, there are orange, there are light green, there are violet, there are red. Name all the colors, it's here. It's here in this plants. And you will see in this tank that they have the kabomba. And look at this. They have this nearite snails. And these snails will eat the algae that is harmful to the plants. The role of the snail is really very important. That's it. And if you will examine closely, you will see that there are tadpoles. You look at them. Instead of having fish, they're having tadpoles inside in this tank. Ginny said that the tadpole has a perfect role in this tank because this will be the janitor of all the algae that are in here. These are actually exotic plants that you cannot just see anywhere. You cannot even see this normally at the pet stores. You see here that the couple are really doing some trimming because every now and then they need to trim this one to be able also to propagate. Well, the wife of Jeannie is Marine. It's here. Say hi yeah, to the hi. camera. <laughs> Jeannie is here. And they are now telling us how to plant this one. So they are cutting this and then they will transfer this one to another container, maybe a little shallow. Can you show us how to plant this one? Yeah, sure. This plant is Singonantos believe one of the most expensive plants and also the higher demand. Yes, it's high in, in demand, yeah. one of the most expensive. Yeah. And he will show us how to plant this one. He has a small pail that is filled with mud and I think Jenny where did this mud came from? From the rice field or? Rice field. Yeah. Yes. He got this from the rice field and he is now demonstrating to us how to plant. You see that one. Ganito lang po pag pagtatanim. Ganito lang kasimple. Mula sa pagtatanim, 2 to 3 weeks. Talagang yumayabong na talaga siya. Aabot na siya talaga ng mga 6 to 7 inches mula sa pagtatanim. So you're doing now the planting and is this the same procedure adapted in this variety of plants? Meaning, is there any variation in the planting system? No, it's the same. All the plants is the same how to plant. It's very simple. So whatever plants you will propagate, you will do this procedure. Yes, yes. You look at him planting it's very orderly you cannot just plant anywhere two weeks from now you will see a basin that is already filled with green plants and these plants are really good for a planted aquarium since when you have started to plant this ornamental thing these plants maybe 
because I've been here for the past two years and it's already been here. Yes. So maybe you've started it three or four years ago? Uh, I started this in, I think, 2000. More, almost 10 years. Almost so it's been years, doing yeah. this more than 10 years yes. and it's only now that they see the products of their effort, you know, they are really very blessed because of this business. And what's the most costly plant? Is here? Yes. It costs yeah, us two thousand five hundred per stem. Yes. This Ludwigia white, one of the most expensive. Also, the Ludwigia white, the most expensive and very rare plants. The Ludwigia white. What's the scientific it, name of this plant? Uh, I forgot. Horatius Pendupus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same how to plant. Yeah, and you will see that this very rare and very expensive. Imagine, Jenny is telling us that one stem will cost around 2,500 pesos in the market globally. But they are selling now only 1,500 pair, two stems. But usually we send them five stems or more than. Yeah, yeah. So what about if this plant will reach to three to four weeks? What's the result of this? Yes. Can you show to we, us? We... So this is the result. How old is this? Is this three weeks old? Two to three weeks. Imagine. This is Imagine. two to three weeks old. And they're just planting as small as this. And then it's now very tall. Sinjonanthus filling also we have here. The two green two, ones. The two to three weeks old. Yeah. Over here. Look at this. This is the result. When this plants will reach two to three weeks old, the result will be like this. Oh my goodness. This is a business. This is not an ordinary business. This is a big business. That's why if you are encouraged to also do like this thing, well, one of the things that he revealed to me is that this tank has overflowing water and he got the water from the streams and that's one of the secrets that he has i'm telling you right now that's no longer a secret maybe you will ask what's the depth of this tank wow that's two feet two feet means 24 inches and the width is 10 feet and from there to there is 20 22 feet 22 feet wow you got to have a big space I see that some of these plants are already very tall but some are just creeping under the ground underneath so what's the purpose of this you haven't trimmed this one yes so this is due for trimming yes it's telling us that this is due for trimming every time that the plants will grow tall like this they will cut this one and then replant this to another container so you look at this one what is this plant? This is Blixia japonica. Blixia japonica. It sounds like a Japanese japonica from Japan. This is not the kind of snail that is useful. Harmful. This is harmful. We'll throw this one. Oh, we'll throw that one. But this one is one of the best seller plants. Many people like yeah. to buy this one for their aquariums. So it's telling us that in the garden this is directly exposed to sunlight but then if you will transfer this inside the aquarium you need the p5 light yeah p5 it, or led lights or led lights that will take the place of the sunlight so the ratio is two to three watts Per gallon. And for the low light plants, of course, we have a low light requirement. So any lights can do, but the high lights plants are the ratio is 2 to 3 watts per gallon. So imagine if you have 10 gallons, how many watts do you need to have? So that's 30 watts. Guys, we're here at the back of this aquatic plantation. You will see the kind of soil he is using. You do not need basic soil. There are some alternative soil to plant your aquatic plants. Just like that, ordinary soil. Yeah. I use this. Okay. Just like this. Look at that. So that's an ordinary soil that yes. you can just get the back of your house. Oh. Anywhere you can just find this ordinary, ordinary soil. soil. But there is another secret. Well. Of course, if we are 
having planted aquariums, we will use the T5 light to replace the sunlight. But the problem is, naturally, that sunlight will cause the development of the algae. And what's the solution? Actually, Ginny has the secret, and the secret is this one. The tadpoles, you look at here, come over here. These tadpoles will solve the problem of the development of the algae inside the aquarium. We look at them, there are hundreds of them, and many have said, What's the secret? Well, the secret now is revealed by means of the tadpole. Your algae will completely be eradicated from the aquarium. Some others use medicines that will eradicate the algae, but we are introducing the tadpoles. There are hundreds of them. And come on, as proof of this one, we're gonna throw this in this tank of plants. Well, come on. Do we need to acclimatize this one or no, can just release no need, it? No, need. Need. Uh, yeah, no acclimatization. So, we will release the tadpole. Come on, go and multiply. Eat <laughs> and eat the algae, yes. So, see that how the ecosystem works. This is all natural, you don't need medicine. Well, that's a bunch of tadpole and they are there. The army against the algae. You know, algae really are the problems of the plants. So, these tadpoles will become frogs, but no problem, they will just come out of the tank. And that's what he revealed to us. So, we will proceed to the newly planted foreground. We're here at the nursery of these plants. If you are landscaping your aquarium, there is a three parts. There are three parts. The background, the mid-ground, and the foreground. And the foreground plants are just right here. They are propagated in this manner. These are the plants that are good for the foreground. And you will see here, that these are carpet plants. Yes. We have also here the uh, Cryptocorin parba. This is for, for foreground and also this is Ilatin Tiandra. This is foreground also. And we have also some Echinodorus cordifolios background. And we have also Liliopsis Nobasilandi. This is rare foreground plant also. This is also the high demand Staurigin ripens for foreground also. And this is called Hairgrass Japan. The difference between Hairgrass Japan and Dwarf Hairgrass, the Dwarf Hairgrass Emers. They produce some flowers, but yeah. if you look at that, there is no flowers, even emerge form. This is the difference between the dwarf hair grass and also hair grass Japan or hair grass mini. This is hair grass mini. This is yes. nice. What about this one? This is also HC, Pimientos Calitricoids. That is the scientific name. This is also for foreground plants. And we have also Hydrocotyl tripartita. Yes. It's very hard to pronounce. Yes. It's a uh, hydrocotyl tripartita. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is also Monte Carlo. The bigger leaves than Himianthus calitricoides or Itchy. Look at that, the difference. The Monte Carlo is bigger, bigger leaves than the Itchy. That is the difference. But they are all the same foreground plants. This is how to propagate Monte Carlo. Look at that. We slice around one inch by one inch. Very fast. Yes. After two months. Yes, after two months. Yeah. So you are selling how much? Well, per one three uh, square inch. We sell this three inches by three inches for 300. More expensive than the itchy Himientos Calitricoid. Himientos Calitricoid, three inches by three inches for only 200 pesos. We have also here the Sagittaria Subulata. If you put this in the high light tank, they are grow smaller. But if you put some low light tank, they grow high. Their growth are hampered, they will not yeah. immediately become very tall. You look at these plants here. Wow, these plants are also foreground. Some of them are, I think, backward. one is newly planted and you will see that they are the, being disturbed by this algae. algae that's why I said he said that we need the truck to eat all this kind of uh, pest this is a pest yeah. for the plants so yes 
You will see now that there are three layers here and some of them are tall plants and they are used as the background or even the mid-ground and you will see how they are being propagated. They use the steel stand and of course this sea furlings, the metal furling and it's already there. It's a plant stand already. This is the immersed form of Ludwigia white. Oh wow. The one six pieces, yeah. yeah. It's very simple. Look at that. Look at the substrate. I use also ordinary soil. Look at that. Wow. Imagine if you will have thousands of stems and you are selling that at 2500 for three or four stems. That's a lot of money. Yes. And uh, this is not an ordinary because this is really in demand globally. And uh, the international price will cost us around hundreds of dollars. This is Echinodorus Honey Red Pearl. And how much? Uh, we sell this 350 each, but I don't know, maybe more expensive in other country. Just but. the 350 pesos is yeah. just some seven dollars, I think. This plant is very easy to culture because you just need the water and of course the substrate, the soil, and you can propagate this one. So these are the coral moss and they're propagating this by means of attaching this to a steel screen and they're submerging this in this shallow water. So this is the fully grown of the coral moss and this is for the foreground of your planted tank. here a kind of plant a newly planted this is hepatitis florentiana no that's not hepatitis <laughs> this is heptis florentiana ah, i'm sorry i stand, I stand corrected heptis florentiana, florentiana yes. yes newly planted four days old and we will put this now here the system is they're going to plant this one wait for a couple of days and then that's the time that they will load or submerge this one in this tank So I hope you have gained knowledge out of this video and you will continue to like and share, continue to follow us Dexter's World, please hit that notification bell and subscribe to our channel only here at Dexter's World.